I'm John Irvine, founder of Golf Gains Fitness, and I'm on a mission to be the world's fittest scratch golfer. So why would I want to challenge myself to be the world's fittest golfer? Really, it's quite simple. I'm passionate about both golf and fitness, and I want to be excellent at both of them. Oh, oh. Go time! Demoralized right now. Shot of the day right there. That is so brutal! Woo. So, came up with this challenge, trying to be the world's fittest golfer. And really, the tough part was trying to figure out all right, what makes someone a golfer, what makes someone fit, and what makes you kind of elite at both. So, when we're looking at golf, I think the thing that most people would look at is your handicap index. And the goal that pretty much every golfer has is that they want to be scratch or better. So, right now, I am a, on, my, on the Gin app, I'm a five handicap. So, I got some work to do on that. Um, but, you know, if you want to be a good golfer, you got to be good at everything. And if you're scratch, that means you're good at, you know, you're good off the tee, you've got some distance, you've got a good short game, you got to be good at everything. Uh, same thing with the fitness part of it. You know, you've got strength, you got power, speed, stamina, endurance, mobility, coordination, your aerobic capacity. There's so many things that go into fitness. So like, how do you find one test that can do it? And I've seen a lot of these different challenges floating around. One that really caught my eye, it's called the two, three, four, five challenge. So what that means is in a six minute window, you're gonna have to do a 225 power snatch, a 315 bench press, and a 405 back squat. So you got two plates, three plates, four plates, and then you've got to run a mile, which will essentially have to be around a five minute mile. Do all of that in under six minutes. So I don't know many people in the world that can do that, let alone golfers. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it today, but I'm going to give it a try. Uh, the thing that I'm most concerned about is going to be trying to do that run. I feel pretty good about the lifts. I think I can get knock those out, but trying to run like a five and a half minute mile, that's going to be tough. But we're going to find out today. But before I attempt this challenge first, Ow. I need to see if this is even possible. So I needed some expert opinions from both the golf and the fitness side. All right, J-Fly, long time no see. Yes, good sir. to see you. All right, so I'm here because I have a question for you. You've seen my game, I've seen you before, so you're familiar with my golf game. Do you think I can be the world's fittest scratch golfer? No. All right then, thank you for your time. So we are here with Jonathan Fly, AKA J Fly. Uh, he is one of the top golf instructors here in the uh, Memphis area. How hard is it for someone to be a scratch golfer? It, it, it certainly takes a lot of time and energy and practice and mm -hmm. lessons and having the right information. But a guy like you that's so strong and has the potential to hit it forever, the way the game's trending, the whole drive for show, putt for dough slogan from 30 years ago, like that's becoming obsolete. So to me, like some course management stuff, just understanding where to miss the ball and around the greens, instead of trying to be super aggressive all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a cool thing you're doing for sure, because you look at all these PJ Tour players, they travel with their golf mm -hmm. their instructor, their personal trainer, their chef, their sports psychologist, they got a whole team, right? So yeah. to be at the top of the top, it certainly takes all the, like I said, all the homework and eating properly and hydrating in the summer and yep. all that stuff. So there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that goes into it for sure. Now, before I make the claim that I'm the world's fittest golfer, I need one more opinion from someone who needs no introduction. Dr. Rose, thanks so much for joining me. So it may sound kind of pretentious, but it, the goal is, can I become the fittest scratch golfer in the world? Is that, is that <laughs> possible? So, and I don't know if it's possible, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it and see if I can do it. In a six minute time frame, can you power snatch 225, bench press 315, back squat 405, and run a mile? You just knocked me out with the mile right there. I know, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be the hardest part for me too. Do you, do you know of anyone that is a scratch golfer or better or anyone on tour that you think would be able to complete that workout. Man, right I, I'm telling you right now, man, we got some good we got some good athletes now on in professional golf. The Dustin Johnsons, the Brooke Kepka, the you know, there, there's and the guys in the past like the Brad Faxons, ones that are that I would be like, if anybody could do it, it'd be these guys, right? There's a couple, but I, I, I would say what you just listed right there, if you could do that, you would be one of very few. You think I could maybe claim the title? I, I think I think <laughs> The cool thing about claiming titles is then you get other people to try and we'll see. I know, that's you know kind mean? of the goal. Good luck. Let us know about the challenge. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll tell the world. Let me know how you do. 
So the thing that really caught my eye about this workout, while I thought it was a good test, is because you know, the snatch, that is gonna be a good test of your upper, lower body power, as well as like your mobility coordination. Uh, you've got the bench press, which is just kind of like the, the king of upper body strength movements. And then similarly, back squat is, you know, one of the best lower body strength movements. So, you know, all those tested. And then right after that, you're going straight to running a mile as fast as you can. And that's gonna really test your aerobic capacity. So if you can do all those, you're gonna hit all those metrics really in that one workout, so. All right, so what the lift's gonna look like, this is what I feel like is gonna be the most efficient way to do it. Got my three bars lined up. So we're gonna come here. Once I touch this bar, that's when the clock is gonna start. We're gonna knock out that power snatch. So that's simply taking the bar from the ground overhead and one movement landing in that power position from there going to hustle to get into this bench press all you're doing picking it up touching the chest locking out at the top and racking and then the last but not least this is going to be the most amount of weight 405 will be on here doing this back squat walking it out getting a full depth squat so hip crease below the knee standing up i'm probably just going to drop this thing off my back and I'm going to take off out this bay door right here and sprint my mouth. That'll be the workout. We've actually mapped it out already. Three entire laps around this building plus a finish. And we're going to actually finish right by the FedEx Forum with the Grizzlies. Be fun. Maybe John Morant will be out there cheering me on. We'll see. I'm going to put this on run. And so I'm going to start my run on my Garmin right before I do my snatch. So it'll keep track of everything, keep me on pace, and then we'll be able to see on the Garmin if I'm able to finish the mile in that six minute window. Three seconds off. Finishing 623, so got some work to do on the mile. Hit my goal on the lifts, got down to under 30, and then the mile just got tough. Just the legs felt so heavy. Got something to train for. Yeah, once I got through my second lap, that third lap, for a minute I thought I was gonna get it. And then uh, once I got up here, there was like 10 seconds left, so I think I finished. I kind of put my head arms up, and it's like that's six minutes right here. And all I had to get to was that stop sign right by the FedEx floor. And that would have been one mile. So how far is that? Like about 100 meters? I'm about 100 meters short. So knocked out the fitness portion today. Tomorrow we're going to fly around the golf and see where I can improve on that day. The, the toughest part about this workout, the thing that makes it so tough is like, you know, I would love to be, you know, 15 pounds lighter. And that would help with my run. But then it's like, is that going to take away from the list? Like, I'm gonna be working on my running more, but I can't forget about my lifts too. So, I mean, it really does test everything. Like, you gotta be strong. Like, you gotta be able to run. And it's hard to be that strong. Cause like right now I'm about 215 pounds, which is about how much you need to weigh to be able to do those lifts. I mean, you could get a little bit lighter than that and hit those lifts, but it makes it tougher. But it's like, you just gotta balance like how light do you wanna be for the lift so you can do the run. Training, yeah, and then on top of that, like if I'm trying to get scratched, like I'm gonna have to be putting in some more practice out on the golf course too. So it's just how do you balance all those things? That's what's gonna make it tough and that's what's gonna make it a journey. We are at Spring Creek Ranch. It is one of the top courses in the whole state. I think it was actually ranked number three, two or three in golf digest. Uh, courses in Tennessee. So it's a challenge. I've played it many times and it, it is the hardest course in the area in my opinion. So uh, this is gonna be a good one to, to test out because you're gonna have to hit every single shot here. So 
gonna be a true test. All right, decent start. It's always good to get a good drive to start. That kind of builds the confidence because after that range session, I was not feeling in sync at all with my swing. So had no idea where that first ball was going to go, but getting one to go dead straight in the fairway is always a nice relief. Oh no, I thought that was going to be in the fairway, but yep, this is one of those things that I don't practice very much. So, so I got a 50 degree, going to try to hit it about a three quarter. Hopefully I can hit it clean. Sit. A little long, but I hit it clean. Just too much club. Course management. Got to rake the bunkers. It's a good strike. Just took a little too much club, but I'm just not. I just don't practice those shots very much. I don't, but can't be upset with, you know, hitting it solid. And, yeah, people always make fun of me because every like chip shot, I always bring like all my wedges out here, but I'm real, never really know which one I want to hit. Some people kind of hit the same wedge on every chip, but I like to change it up. Is that all? Yeah, just kind of rolled out. Definitely need to make par on this one. All right, we'll par save, starting off strong. All right, hole two. This is my least favorite tee shot in this entire golf course. It's just such a narrow window. It doesn't really look like it from here, but to your left, you're blocked out by the tree, and then right, you're in stuff. It's just, there's a very narrow window to hit it in. Hold on. Went a little right, but we'll see where it landed. Maybe it's all right. For about 145 from the pin. See if we can get it out of this lie. Oh no, it got pulled. Oh no. Well, not ideal. Ended up just pulling that way left. Don't even know if I'll be able to find that one. Yeah, I'm not too hopeful about this. I think it is in the creek. Question is, do I go down in there? Yeah, I don't know. I have to drop. Go! Go! All right. Wish I had a different club, but I don't feel like going to the cart, so we're just gonna use the same one. All right, not a gimme. Turn in. There we go. I'm gonna have to rebound from that one. Double bogey, got a six. Like I said, that the tee shot, that one's always tough. I don't think I've ever birdied that one. It's, that hole's kind of always been my nemesis. Here we go, we got par five. Hopefully we can make up a stroke on this one, make up from the last hole. All right, should be sitting pretty. Good tee shot. Gonna have some decisions to make though, depending on how far out we are. It's a par five. You can definitely get it there, but the problem is it's water right up in front of the green. So you gotta be very confident in this next shot. So we'll see, see how far out we are. We are looking at a 215. We're gonna go for it. We are going for it. Gonna pull five iron. This should be just a smooth five iron. We're gonna get this thing close. Give us a scoring opportunity. Go! Oh man, this is not, not playing like I should be. That was aggressive. Some course management stuff, just instead of trying to be super aggressive all the time. Didn't get it there, went into the water, so. Be on it. All right, good wedge shot. Turn in. Oh, bad hole. Not a great start. Hole four, 
play here is to try to hit something about like 250, 260 over the water. Give yourself a, you know, wedge in, so. Not my best, but I kind of pulled a little left. That's what I kept doing on the range. All right, well, good news is it's in the fairway, but it's about 50 yards left of where I wanted it to be. Come on, be on it. Go. A little short. Came up a little short, long putt. Let's make it, make some magic happen. Turn in. Turn in. All right. That was big. Maybe that'll get me back on track. Also, I gotta mention this for just a sec. If you're looking to optimize your fitness and golf game, be sure to check out the Golf Games Fitness app. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can start with the two week free trial and join me in this journey. Sit. Come on. Sit. Mm. Well, as good as I can hit a drive on this one. Nice little butter cut. Be on it. Felt good. We got a birdie on the card. That's what we needed. It's go time, let's go. Clear that bunker. Be good. Ah. Oh yeah, that was launched. Curve right on there. Sit. All right. Gotta support the balls. Go Big Orange. Got a big game coming up this week, so I'm gonna make this putt for them. If this putt, if this putt goes in, then that means Tennessee is winning this weekend. Putting a lot of pressure on myself. Oh, let's go. That was that was big. That was a big putt, mainly for the balls. So I'm working with, trying to go with the healthiest option. Got some tuna salad. So one bite, everyone knows the rules. Not bad. Good amount of tuna in there, so good protein. Got some egg whites. The one thing that it could use that I'm a big fan of is some, some chopped onion. That, that, that takes tuna to the next level. So I'm gonna give it a you know, 7.8. That's a review. Hole 10, we're able to piece together a pretty good front nine. So let's see if we can keep the momentum going. It's over that bunker, it's good. I don't see it in the bunker. Oh, yes. Way over the bunker. Let's go. Shoot. Oh, chunked it. It'll be short. How long uphill? Probably gonna chip this. Keep rolling. Really grabbed right there. I thought that was gonna be really good. All right, good start to the back nine. 
Another par. All right, here we are, hole 11. This is another tough hole. It's a long par four, danger on the right. But if you play it safe and go left, then you're forever to the hole. So need another good drive here. Money. All right, there we go. Didn't strike it well, hit it kind of thin, but got away with it and, and break a little bit to the left. Oh, I've just babied that. Oh, what a terrible stroke. Uh, short par four, not, don't want to be too aggressive with driver, really just kind of looking for like a 240, 250 shot, so. And just hit this two iron. Just try to get it out there. Ah, I keep pulling that. Not where I wanted to hit it. All right. Got a decent look. Pretty straight, pretty uphill. Somewhat makeable putt. Get there, get there, go! Oh, that was close. Good two putt. This one, this is, to me, this is my, I think this is the most beautiful hole out here. I love this hole. Come on, be good. Sit. All right, just a little far, but that was a pretty good strike. It's gonna have a little bit more movement. Kinda got a nice little... Turn. No, really didn't turn much. Definitely got a hold of it. Yeah, that was good. I need to be a little bit more left to have a look at it in two, but I'm gonna probably be blocked out by the trees. Yeah, not gonna lie, the driver is feeling pretty hot right now. And the, the irons are starting to come alive. So this could be a pretty good back nine. So I don't wanna jinx myself, but feeling good right now. So this is where it's tough. You can see tree overhanging. Like I can get there maybe if I fade, like a, maybe like a six iron. So that would be the aggressive play. Try to hit a six iron. Drive was beat. That's 300 right there. And got like a five yard roll out. Oh, be good. Come on. That was it. That was the shot of the day right there. Got an eagle putt. Big bird time. Actually, this is the only hole out here I've ever eagled. This was my bachelor party actually came out here and played around the golf. And I was about 120 out and hold out. For, that's the only eagle I think I've ever had out here. So yeah, we're gonna make it happen again today. All right, it's pretty straight. Oh no. Oh, what a terrible putt. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Left myself a lot of meat. I think the adrenaline was just flowing through my veins on that one. Oh, brutal. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so brutal. What a terrible three putt par. I was doing so good with my putting. That's that's one that you're gonna look back on for a while and have a lot of regrets about that one. Oh man, but gotta shake it off. All right, new hole, new hole. Yeah, I really don't wanna talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, here we go. Another par four over the water. This one's not too bad. You just got kind of a narrow landing spot with driver. Let's see if we can keep the driver hot though. A little right, might be in that bunker. Stop, hold up. Eee, be close, might be in the fairway bunker. That was dangerously close to being in the fairway bunker, which is my least favorite shot in golf, so. Take it, win. Not bad. Let's see if we can make up from that putting disaster on the last hole. That one, not gonna lie, was kind of in my head. Glad, glad to see it drop them. <laughs> Trying to decide here, this is definitely not a driver hole, but got a five wood and a two iron. I haven't really hit this one well. I've pulled it twice. Not bad. A little left of ideal, but all right, I got a question for the viewers. You call them five woods or five metals or fairway woods or fairway metals? Let me know what's correct. I still go with woods. I think it's just a habit. And I've actually never played with woods. My whole golfing career, it's always been metal, but I guess it's just tradition. Oh, pulled it. Get over. Eek. Long and left, got a long, long putt with a nice little downhill slope right before the pin. Gonna be tough to judge this one. Yeah, I think I go. It's almost like you can decide which one to go. I think I'm gonna do, let it come down. Or I could take it here. I think that's the line to go. At all. Yeah, that's, that's just a tough putt. Big par putt right here. No! Why'd I do that? Tough three putt. So just carded another bogey. I think that puts me up four over right now, uh, which is actually pretty good for out here. So with the way this course is rated and how again works, I don't know exactly, but I, if I can finish at four over out here, it might be like a one differential or something like that. We'll see, but um, gotta finish strong. Yeah. Looking at 165, a little bit of wind in us. Try to go with an eight iron. We got water on the right, so I gotta be careful of that. Sit. Oh. Dang, did not think long would be the miss. Yeah, that went pretty good bit long. Did not see that coming. So got a nice little chip and putt, not much green to work with. Stop. Mm. Uh. All right, another bogey. That was, that was a tough one. Last hole, 18, par five. Something about finishing with a par five. That is, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. Let's see if we can finish strong. Oh, a little right. Hold on. Oh, shoot. Kind of went onto the cart path on the right. You see it? Oh yeah. All right, got a little window. I'm gonna drive around and kind of see what I'm able to hit. Got a decent amount of room. No point of trying to get super aggressive out of this. Just need to knock something up there. Oh no. Oh man, oh, for real. 
Where'd that go? Oh man, right over here now. No, the punch out was not successful. About to go round two now. Just gotta hack something out of here. Here, let me get a shorter club. Holy cow, this is, yep, this is what you call a disaster final hole. Oh my gosh, what a travesty, what a travesty. I don't know, I don't know, honestly, I don't know what I would have done different. Screwed myself on that first punch out and just put myself in a worse spot. That's golf. If I really squared up, I can maybe get it to the green. Roll down, roll down. All right, demoralized right now. I'll be hoping to get double bogey right now. If it would have just kept going down this hill, it would have been right in line with that pin. But just not getting the brakes on this hole. Not getting the brakes on this hole. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Good finish to a tough hole. That's the 18. So we're gonna analyze the data, see what areas I need to improve on. I already know for a fact it's going to be punch outs from the woods. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you can follow me in the rest of my journey on becoming the world's fittest scratch golfer.